Hi, this is Eric Durack for Med Health Fit Commentary. Our topic today is detailing some of the important issues in artificial intelligence technology as it's applied to wellness. Recently, I had occasion to listen to a YouTube video by Mr. Mark Morsch, who is the Chief Technology Officer at Optum Health Plans in Minnesota. Mark's main job is to deliver artificial intelligence, or AI, to customers using one or more of the following. A, he wants to clean up all the unstructured information from the current electronic or paper medical records across the U.S. Mark and others feel that AI will be able to take the burden off, off current physician records and make sense out of all of these things for both individual patient care and for groups of patients within large physician practices. Next, he wants to reduce the amount of chart and review duplication. And this is a huge problem in healthcare. It's both the amount that's duplicated uh, with both procedures and for charting. Again, Mark feels that things like labs, patient notes, past histories, diagnostics, procedures, and discharge information can all be streamlined through AI applications. Also, he wants to work on complex payer policies. Uh, which means working with fee-for-service insurers, health plans, and CMS that'll all be made easier. In other words, doctors will get paid faster. When they use AI versus traditional methods to prepare and deliver these reimbursement forms. AI will be able to deal with prior authorization, patient care review, and retrospective payments, those that may be past due. And they also will improve the level of success from speed, patient satisfaction, and consistency uh, that is currently performed. Since AI is a combination of things like machine learning, language and processing, and pattern recognition, people are relying on it to help them sift through the mountains of current information that is part of our healthcare system. One of the big segments of AI is health outcomes, which is defined by Optum as the following. Early diagnosis and treatment, PBMs or pharmacy benefit management, risk adjustment, and population analysis. In general, there seems to be a lot of issues that AI may be able to streamline within the current system. With most AI portals, they're able to handle millions of computations a second. So it's not uncommon for doctors like oncologists to come up with a specific therapy for breast cancer based not only on the patient's age, cancer stage, location, and history, but their demographics and other factors. And what other types of therapies that may have worked for this situation in the past by looking through hundreds of thousands of research reports, all condensed in AI, and coming to a conclusion based on the results that are applied to this particular breast cancer case. A 2017 Forrester study said that over 60% of healthcare professionals choose AI as the top adaptation priority for technology. Although only 6% of practitioners and health systems actually use AI now, it's expected that in a very short time, over a third of health systems will have AI technology at their fingertips. This sounds wonderful, but with all of the insight and reading that I've been doing over the past three years on AI, I can't help but reflect on Mr. Morsh's comment about looking at all of the AI in movies in, in terms of you know, what they're doing in healthcare. And I think to myself, has he not seen a movie with AI? Let's start with HAL 9000 in the movie 2001 Space Odyssey. Well, here HAL takes over the ship's computer, uh, controls from Captain Dave because he doesn't want to get disconnected. In human terms, we call that a mutiny. Another more recent movie, I, Robot, pits an AI machine against policeman Will Smith because the robot actually goes rogue, meaning it wants to follow its own will versus being told what to do by those pesky humans. Lastly, and perhaps one of the first movies featuring a brand of artificial intelligence, was the 1983 movie War Games, where Matthew Broderick accidentally hacks into the NORAD missile computing system. And of course, the computer will not relinquish its commands because it actually thinks it's playing a version of chess. Well, the strategy almost annihilates the world. So other movies like Automata, Ex Machina and Transcendence all move down the dark road of AI as pitting the will of the machine with its newfound emotions against those bad humans or exerting the actual control. The ending in most cases did not bode well for the humans. So where does this lead to with regards to healthcare? Well, most people in the United States understand that the healthcare system is inefficient, it's dangerous, 
and it creates no real health, only medical customers. It's actually the third leading cause of premature death in the U.S., and it shows no signs of getting any better, irrespective to the use of AI. Why do I say this? Because all of the systems that are looking to improve medical care as it's functioning now, it really has no plans on including the use of other types of health therapies that may cost less or are more effective. Hmm. The reason is that these people would take less advantage of the current system than they do now, and that's really bad for business. The system runs on a diagnosis and running people through the healthcare system. Let's take an actual example of a person with basal cell squamous epithelial carcinoma. This is a 79-year-old woman. In many cases, the tissue, which is a mole, would be removed in a physician's office, biopsy studies performed, and recommendations to the patient would be made after that. In this case, however, because of the patient's age, multiple doctor visits were scheduled, a contrast CT was ordered, and surgery in a major cancer center was recommended to her. On the day of surgery, the times of surgery were backed up, more blood needed to be drawn, and yet another contrast CT scan was ordered. After surgery, the woman was given morphine for her pain and had a reaction, so she was requested to stay overnight at the hospital. A routine procedure that should have taken an hour or two in a doctor's office and a few hundred dollars wound up as a major medical procedure with over $29,000 in costs. Even AI would not have changed the course of this treatment because much of it was preordained. Unless an AI unit counseled the doctors to use an outpatient procedure for this patient in the first place, there is really little efficacy in using this type of technology in many cases that are similar to this woman's. So the issues that I have with using AI in medicine is that it's aggregating data on the same old system. Medicine isn't interested in fixing the number of days in a hospital. If they reduce that number by 25%, they'd lose an awful lot of money. They also may not be interested in lowering the amount of pricing that we pay for drug prescriptions, as it would also carry a financial burden for them. I assume that they may use AI to alert them to specific drug interactions or using a specific type of medication based on a, gen a genetic profile of a patient or their past history of use with any type of particular med which may interfere. Medicine wants to be more high-tech and using AI may help them with issues concern, concerning double billing uh, or medical reporting. I'm not sure how all this would translate to better care in which most people's eyes have to do with spending more time with the patient, delivering not only the proper acute care, but also following up with long-term lifestyle changes that may reduce their odds for having that condition get worse over time. This type of intervention is not the essence of today's healthcare system. But population health management, well, it means a lot of things to a lot of different people. However, in medicine, it's about controlling costs, making more money, and delivering care that's acceptable to most patients. Now, with all this doom and, groom, doom and gloom, is there a level of a silver lining here? Well, there may be. Because in health promotion, the profession is moving towards AI also to help manage the reams of information that they collect on their patients from health coaching to nutrition uh, to health club usage. All the sets, the reps, the revolutions, and the reports that are done in the health and fitness profession, they do have value. But for the most part, there's not much information on their usage and trends that's in the actual medical literature these days outside of some sports medicine groups and health promotion journals, much of the information is relegated to the filing cabinets behind the fitness desk. Okay, so now how can we translate that into action? Initially, a customer in the health sector should embrace the use of AI for their wellness as they do with their physicians. Because these physicians now, some of them are using some type of AI with a health plan, to, to get rid get through all this medical data. This means that the information from each of their health programs, something like total steps, their heart rate, total minutes, their strength training program, their range of motion, their blood pressure, their body weight, and their body composition, they're all recorded. And this data can be aggregated later on. This information should correlate to something medical, like the use of regular blood tests. Uh, if you have your cholesterol and your inflammatory markers measured in January, when you start an exercise program 
And then again in August, when you've performed about 80 to 90 sessions, you should be able to see some profound changes. If not, then some kind of reevaluation is necessary. However, the correlation to blood labs is usually very positive with wellness and something that most physicians would embrace. They'd be able to see these profound changes in those blood labs and give positive feedback to patients. If anything else, just say, keep doing what you're doing. Once wellness embraces AI and they can continue to show improvements in their own health parameters and indices, then I think it's going to bode very well for both medicine and wellness. As it stands, AI right now is, inclusive, is intrusive, think Alexa, and may not do all the things that people think it should be doing, or they simply don't know the current possibilities. Like a good app on your iPhone, you should be able to use it daily and it should fit to your needs. I think eventually AI will be part of everyone's life from the healthcare sector on down. But it should be able to look at getting people healthier, even if it's referring them to a massage therapist versus an occupational therapist. Until then, we should care about the dark side of AI and work along all of those people in the healthcare technology professions to create the ultimate wellness machine. Time will tell, and we hope that the te te technology will be able to help us as a little intrusion and a little amount of problems as possible. This is Eric Dirac for MedHealth Fit Commentary. Thanks for watching.